Now let's talk about the equilibrium constant. It's capital or uppercase letter K. Uh, and I will just use uh, K in general. Some people use K sub EQ, where the EQ stands for equilibrium. I'll just use K, and then we will see some other subscripts uh, as we go. But in general, equilibrium constants, capital K, lowercase k, uh, is many things. Uh, but one of them is that it's the rate constant for kinetics. K sub C is written in terms of concentration and, more specifically, molarity, capital M. And for any reaction at equilibrium where the little letters are the coefficients and the big letters are the uh, chemical compounds, the uh, expression for the equilibrium constant will be capital K equals concentration of products, so it's an uppercase C, raised to the exponent of the coefficients. Formula of compounds raised to coefficient and products over reactants. So little letters are coefficients, big letters are chemical formulas. And as an example of this, if we take a reaction where carbon monoxide plus two hydrogens goes to methanol, we can write an equilibrium constant and uh, you can write concentrations for gases. Uh, we will write an equilibrium constant K as the product raised to the coefficient, which is just one, so we won't show it, divided by concentration of carbon monoxide raised to the one again times the concentration of H2 squared, where I just want to be clear this 2 that is a coefficient is that 2 there. Coefficients are exponents. In equilibrium constants. And this compares differently with when we were talking about kinetics, we said coefficients are not necessarily exponents because uh, exponents in the rate laws depend upon how the reaction happens. But here, coefficients are exponents. I know, it's confusing, but you will get it. Uh, now let's talk about Kp. Kp is the equilibrium constant written in terms of partial pressures for any reaction involving only gases. So Kp will be uh, follow the same set of rules as far as uh, products on the top. So it'll be partial pressure of our product raised to the first power, because coefficients are still exponents, over partial pressure of carbon monoxide times partial pressure of hydrogen squared, and well, I'll stick with red. Coefficients, still exponents. Uh, products, still in the numerator. So uh, generally, K equals products raised to coefficients over reactants raised to coefficients. And we've seen that twice now. And another thing I'll point out to you is that 
Uh, there's never a plus down here. It's always concentrations or partial pressures multiplied times each other. Now, uh, let's talk about the relationship between Kp and Kc for gases. So, and we'll start by looking at an individual gas, so partial pressure of carbon monoxide, and we can write the ideal gas law for that. So, partial pressure of carbon monoxide, or any of the gases, but let's just choose that one, times the volume equals the moles of carbon monoxide times RT. Now, uh, what we can do is I'm going to divide both sides by the volume. And I'm going to stick the volume under the moles. And so moles per volume, when the volume is liters, because remember R is 0 0.08206, liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. So this will be in liters. This moles over liters will be molarity. So cross out my Vs. My partial pressure of carbon monoxide equals my concentration of carbon monoxide in molarity times RT. So uh, and that is that will that is always true. That's just really a rearrangement and then a renaming of the moles over liters as molarity. And we're used to designated with square designating with square brackets the concentration in molarity. So what that means is for any of these we can do the same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my Kp down here. In terms of partial pressures. And then whenever I see a partial pressure, I can replace it with an equivalent expression. And I'll start with my carbon monoxide. So partial pressure of carbon monoxide equals concentration of that same thing times RT. Partial, let's go up to methanol next. Partial pressure of methanol equals concentration of methanol times RT. And <clears throat> since this one's going to be squared, I'll put a bracket. I'm replacing and then I'm squaring. So now let's take all of our concentrations over to one side. We've got concentration of methanol over carbon monoxide times hydrogen concentration squared. And then I've got um, RT and RT that cancel. And then so I've got here 1 over RT squared. And we have already given this thing a name. The name of that thing huh, is, and I apologize for this, I'm going to have to go back and make a change to this. These are KCs. These are KCs, not just Ks. That's what it says right there, Bill. So this thing is KC. So KP equals KC times 1 over RT squared. And another way of putting that is KC times RT raised to the power of minus 2. So that's the relationship and our derivation of the relationship for this specific reaction. We can more generally say that there's a general formula 
and the general formula says that kp equals kc times rt raised to the power of delta n where delta n equals moles of gas on the product side minus moles of gas on the reactant side. And so this is a general formula for the above reaction. We can see that we've got one mole of gas on the product side. We've got one, two, three moles of gas. So, and let's just write that out. Product is methanol gas. So we've got three moles of gas on the reactant side. We've got one mole of gas on the product side. So delta N equals one minus three equals minus two. For this reaction, Kp equals Kc times Rt to the minus two which is exactly the result we got when we did it before. Good. Um, now, uh, what you will be asked is, given Kc for this reaction equals 1.4 times 10 to the plus seven, that's just a seven there, at 298 Kelvin, What is Kp? And we can plug into this. So Kp equals Kc, 1.4 times 10 to the seventh. Kc, Kp do not have units. Um, so we will just write it as a number times Rt. This is our for the ideal gas law, since that's how we derive this. Liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin times 298 Kelvin. And it is that quantity to the minus two. And uh, you, will be have, you will have to be given equilibrium constant values. We won't know them ahead of time, at least for a little while. And, there's one way to calculate them, but in general, you're given K, KCs and KPs. And then just ask to use them. So let's see. I'm going to do this part first. So 0 0.08206 times 298 equals, I get 24.45. Then I'm going to square it. And then I'm going to 1 over it to get to the minus 2 part. I get 1.67 times 10 to the minus three, which I can now multiply times 1.4 exponent seven. And I get, what's this? Oh. Uh, I get 2.3 times 10 to the fourth. I happen to remembered it at least to two digits, so, so far I'm good. That is our Kp value for this reaction at this temperature. Now, this is going to be, like it says, a companion problem similar to the one that we just did.